surrogacy as a CHD patient. Um, creating a family is an important life step um, for everyone, really, and we're no different than other 20 to 30 something year olds. Um, so, creating a family, though, may look a little bit different for us. Um, thankfully, we're in a medically advanced um, era. Can everyone hear me? Um, so, we have options. So, I'll be talking to you about surrogacy. Um, I'll be going through the process and my own experience with it. <coughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Aww. me and my husband Yay. and my amazing cousin who carried for me, Trish, um, and that is me with my little girl, Juliana, who is now one. Um, so at my wedding, my cousin said whenever we were ready, let her know, and she would carry for us. Um, so this is kind of my journey. Um, I will also say when I first started this process, everybody refers to this as a journey. to deal with this journey, but it is most certainly a journey. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs and it's, it's a long process, um, but look at the end result. <laughs> um, so that's little Juliana, we call her baby G. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so deciding to use a surrogate. Um, ultimately, it's your choice. Um, for me, I was not willing to take the risk. Um, could I physically carry a pregnancy? Probably. Would it be my safest route? No. Um, so I um, consulted with my physicians, talked to my family, and obviously my husband, and uh, chose the best option for me. Um, educating yourself from multiple different aspects. So having multiple consultations with your physicians, um, family, especially your spouse, um, will ultimately help you make a confident decision. Um, obviously, there's considering other options, so um, carrying adoption and childless. And I add childless because I think that that's often forgotten about. Um, we're so driven to somehow find a baby, but sometimes it's just not the best option. Um, so I did, did want to include that. Um, and then understanding the surrogacy process. So independent versus agency, medical, legal, and financial. And so those are the topics that I'll be going over. So how do I find a surrogate? <laughs> um, it's a process. So um, independent, they call it indie. Um, so an indie journey is when you're matched with a family or a friend. Um, there's Facebook matching groups, there's matching websites. I've included those at the end of the slide um, that will be available for you guys as well. Um, with an indie journey, you have to do your own research. No one is guiding you through the process. Um, so if you are, if you feel confident enough and are competent enough to be able to do all of that research, um, then an indie journey may work for you. I did an indie journey with my cousin. Um, so agency is the other option. So there's agencies that will match a surrogate with um, the intended parents. Um, and this is typically ten to thirty thousand dollars more expensive because you're paying for these agency um, services. Um, so agencies like to have it just be about the relationship between the surrogate and the IP intended parent. Um, so finances aren't discussed. There's always a middleman. Um, so that's kind of what the agency does. Um, and then there's screening for surrogacy. Um, so just because someone's willing to be a surrogate doesn't mean that they're the best option. Um, and so the medical screening um, varies amongst REs, they're called reproductive endocrinologists, um, which is the physicians in charge of like the IVF clinics or REs. Um, so there's age restrictions, typically it's under 40. Um, my cousin was 42 when we started and because she was a family member, um, it was fine, he let it slide. Um, maximum vaginal deliveries, maximum cesareans, BMI restrictions, and no history of complications in pregnancy. For example, my cousin developed gestational diabetes with Juliana, so she'll no longer be able to um, 
do surrogacy again because gestational diabetes is now a complication in pregnancy. Um, there's a psych eval including the surrogate's husband. Um, background check must have had at least one prior pregnancy resulting in a live birth to let the physician know that your body is able and equipped to um, handle pregnancy and delivery. And it's recommended to be finished having their own children because like anything, um, you know, there are risks for pregnancy. Um, so the medical piece, um, you do have to go through in vitro fertilization. Um, so those are hormone injections. Um, and then monitoring is done with the RE at the IVF clinic through transvaginal ultrasounds and blood tests. So this is a very, very um, basic process to how to create an embryo. Um, and so then after um, you have the IVF, then you have an egg retrieval, so they retrieve your eggs, mix it with your spouse's sperm, um, and then an embryo is created. Um, and then the surrogate also goes through IVF. The goal is for you guys to be on the same cycle, to prep the surrogate, to be able to take the embryo so that it can grow um, in her uterus. Um, I will say that um, it's not always a perfect scenario. Um, for example, with Juliana, she was our third embryo transfer. So um, our first one didn't, it, it miscarried at nine weeks. And so from the very beginning, the heart rate wasn't um, as fast as it should have been. The, um, the pregnancy hormone numbers weren't looking good. There was just something the whole time that seemed off. And then um, my cousin miscarried at nine weeks. And then the second embryo transfer, um, it resulted in a negative pregnancy test. So it doesn't always work the first time. Um, but Juliana was our third, and then she was born on 3-3. So oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> um, legal. So not all states are surrogacy friendly. Um, and I put a map there. You'll see, I, I do want to say, though, like Washington, for example, is red. That doesn't mean that it's illegal, but compensated surrogacy is illegal. Um, hmm. So, and this is based on where the surrogate is located, not the intended parents. Um, so it's a bit of a dicey game if you are in a non-surrogacy friendly state, um, but there are ways around it. Um, and the surrogate and the intended parents both need legal representation um, to signify who the parents are. Um, I want to go quickly because I'm running out of time. <laughs> um, financial, it's not cheap. <laughs> um, these are some of the things that you'll be paying for. Um, and then lastly, um, I think because I am a therapist, this part is important to me, feeling like a mom. Um, a lot of women feel as if um, not carrying is a real loss for them, and that's you know the physical versus emotional loss, and sometimes that's hard to wrap your head around. Um, birth stories, women love telling their birth stories. <laughs> Yours will be a little bit different and unique. Um, and then the postpartum period is actually advantageous because you're not having that influx of hormones. You're not recovering, um, so that's a great part. Um, bonding with baby, I was able to do skin to skin, um, and then there's belly buds, so um, mm -hmm. you can read to the child and have the surrogate put um, headphones on the belly. I had her play Taylor Swift. <laughs> I knew it. Um, you know, whatever is your thing. Um, and then considering your spouse, um, it's not uncommon for men to envision their wife pregnant, and so that's a loss for them as well. Um, so that's just something to be aware of and have conversations about. Um, surrogacy lingo, I just included this for um, if you view the slides online.